Hey, welcome back. I just got to the end of the stage and realized, wait a minute, I haven't done the video for today. So, we are in stage 11, racing into uh, Moulin, and this is the sprint finish. So, this is probably the last chance for the sprinters to uh, get their stage win until we hit the Champs-Élysées on the last day of the tour. It'll be a fun one for me because not only is it the last day of the tour and the first day of the Tour de France Femme, it's also my birthday. <laughs> Which the tour usually ends around my birthday. So it's yeah, the prize will be. But this is um, the stage winner here. Looked like he wasn't, others behind him were going to do it. But he just kicked the final moment. And just, like all good spinners, seemed to have afterburners. He was two or three guys back with roughly 100 meters to go and of course you don't want to hit the front until it really matters and that's what he did. Jasper Philipson is his name, if I didn't say that. So these sprints are always um, a little tough to get. Of course, you know, the speeds are insanely fast. They'll hit 60, maybe up to almost 70 miles an hour on a bicycle under their own power. It's just insanely fast and insanely dangerous at times too. Today's stage, although a little bit of rain Everybody got through the last couple of turns and the last slightly over half a kilometer was dead straight, which of course, if you don't have to turn as long as nobody knocks you off your bike, it's obviously going to be much safer <laughs> than trying to twist and turn. and they, Race organizers have done a lot better about getting rid of those twisty, turny finishes because they're just too darn dangerous. Like I say, these guys are going so fast that um, any slight mistake, I was stunned. Now Mark Cavendish is unfortunately out of the race now, but the um, stage that he took second, there was a speed bump at about 100 meters to go, which is just, couldn't you finish the race before that speed bump? <laughs> and it is believe, well, actually you can see it in the slow motion video. He was doing really great. He was way ahead just as Grunewagen was way ahead. But then the speed bump came and what we saw in the slow-mo was that um, his chain jumped off or shifted and actually went up from the smallest cog, the toughest gear, up one chain and so he lost his momentum and that you can see it in that finish. And that was what turned out to be his last chance to break the tie that he is currently in with Eddie Merckx for most stage wins in the Tour de France. Today, no such problems, no speed bumps, and fortunately no wrecks at the end of the stage. Sorry, I just saw something I didn't quite get there. Just realized we didn't have 
Bruno Vegan's um, leg or wheels for that matter. So as always, working from light to dark, warm to cool. And getting the um, arms and legs in help me figure out where everything is. Because obviously you can see this quick sketch and how quickly I did it. I can get a little confused at times, as I was without having his other leg in there. So just getting these flesh tones in, and of course we have the crowd all back here. Yelling, screaming, raising their arms. Trying to get their pictures with their cell phones. Occasionally you'll actually see a camera in these crowds. And so now we'll move on to the red. Like I say, working warm to cool, lighter to darker. Obviously the red is a much darker color than, much darker warm color than yellow or orange. Sorry, just a quick look over my shoulder. So. I don't know that I've said it recently, but the way I do this is I'm watching the race as close to live as possible. Now, naturally, when I stop and pause to film a stage or film a paint, <laughs> I'll get this out right. Paint a moment after I pause it. I get off of real time, but in a sense, I'm very much in real time because I have up until um, come on brain up until Phillips and one I had no idea that he would so it's by that sense I'm staying in real time I'm painting all of these images through the series of the day having no definitive idea on what how it will play out so obviously earlier in the stage not knowing that I can, you know, I end up painting breakaways that don't stick or, you know, I'm making my predictions, my reads on what's going on in the race and how that will result. But I don't know what's going to stick when I'm painting any more than you do watching it. So we've got sort of the, now he's the leader in the points jersey, the green jersey, the sprinter's jersey. And that is sponsored by a car company, Skoda. And they have changed the, sprint jersey has always been a green jersey. And they have now changed the colors and it used to be a very bright green. But now it has become a this sort of minty green and a very dark green, which I'll be doing that dark green in just a moment. And it just, you know, up until this year, the Sprinter's jersey was a almost neon green. Certainly made them easy to find, just like the yellow jersey makes the leader of the tour easy to find in the peloton. A lot of people online and a lot of commentators are like going, yeah, we don't like this one. I don't either. So, I mean, and it doesn't help that this particular green is a strand, I know I've said this before, is very similar to one of the teams in the race, their main color of their jersey, Bora Hansgrove. So 
so it just makes them that much harder to pick out. And a little less fun to paint. And Philipson has also been competing not only to win these sprints at the finale, but also getting any points he can in the intermediate sprints to build on his lead in this competition. With this stage victory and the fact that I don't see um, Kokar, the French sprinter, who sits second overall in this competition. I don't see him in this sprint at all, so he's probably now, Philipson, has probably now doubled Cocard's score, and that's the man in second place. Of course, with winning four, there's been five sprints, he's won now four of them and came in second in the fifth one. So, as Phil Liggett said, he certainly deserves to be the leader in this competition. He is clearly the best sprinter in the race. I was just saying before we got to the finish that I was really hoping it was going to be a one for Peter Sagan, who holds the record in winning the maximum number of green jerseys back when they were bright green. He's won it seven years and did it seven years in a row. He also is in the men's peloton, holds the record for the most rainbow jerseys, which he also did three in a row. Notice I said the men's peloton because there is, I'm not gonna find it, so I'm, I'm I think it's Mariana Voss who has won the rainbow jersey four times, not consecutive. But, you know, so that's why I said in the men's peloton, because Marianne, obviously a woman. So, closing in on getting this piece done. So, all of the cycling art that I do. I post on my blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com. And from there, on that, those as I put, post the paintings, I then provide a link, direct link straight through to my website where you can purchase the paintings. It can be a little easier, but you can also search by name, whatever cyclist you may be looking for on the website, but all the work is for sale there. And in some cases, there are digital prints available as well. And of course, I would love it if you would leave a comment, tell me what you think of the image. Is there anything you wanna know about pro cycling that I haven't covered yet? Or watercolors for that matter, art in general. Now, leave a comment and I will answer that either by responding you to your comment. You used to race, and that's how you <laughs> knowledge. Yeah, so that is true. My wife is tell, helping you, helping me remind you that I've always been passionate about cycling. I ride as much as I can still, and I raced amateur way back in the 70s in the United States when not too many people knew what pro cycling and all of that was. Speaking of tying that record, when I got into cycling, Eddie Merckx was the dominant racer of the time. So, there you are. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I hope you learned something about any number of things. Or, like I say, if I didn't cover something, please feel free to ask. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with tomorrow's stage.